بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم told us that towards the end of time the sun will lose its light this is mentioned also in the Holy Quran and the stars will lose its light and so on there are many darknesses awaiting a person one of it the darkness in the grave the darkness on the day of resurrection and the darkness while crossing as sirat and so on there will be no light except whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides with light and this light in the hereafter depends on your deeds your iman your faith and your good deeds and people in the hereafter will have different levels of this light it's not going to be one thing only even the believers themselves they have multiples so in the hereafter there will be three groups of people the disbelievers will be in total darkness not knowing what to do where to go the hypocrites on the other hand those who are apparently Muslims but in reality they were not true Muslims they will be given a light but later on that light will be turned off or they will not be given a light initially but they will utilize the light of the believers because they are with them both can be understood from the ayah in the Holy Quran However, later on, when they, their light will disappear, they will call upon the believers, wait for us, because the believers are much faster. Weren't we with you? We were with you in the hereafter. He says, yes, you were with us. However, you did not take the matter seriously. And you didn't work for this day. And you were consumed with were wishful thinking that nobody is going to know about you, nobody is going to punish you. So the idea is these two groups are going to be in total darkness initially. The third group, the believers, they will be given light. Now the stages of them or the levels are also not the same. Some of them will be given light. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, their light precedes them from in front of them and from their rights. Not right, one side, rights. Because both of it is good. So from around them. Clear? The signs of that light depends on their iman and their good deeds. So some of them will be given a light the distance of a traveling 500 years. On every direction. So it's complete light, nothing to fear. Some of them will be given the light, the distance of their eyesight, so the horizon, all oh, their horizon is lit. And some of them, the size of a mountain, as Abdullah bin Mas'ud explained. And some of them, just in front of them, enough for them to walk. And some of them, just between their feet, the place of where to put his feet. The least among the believers will be give, given a light the size of his thumb. Sometimes it's turned on, sometimes off, on, off. So it'll give him a little glimpse and then off and then a little glimpse and so on. So now if the situation is that, what can we do to increase our light in the hereafter? And there are many things. The most important out of them is faith and belief in Allah Almighty and following the Sunnah of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran, O oh, you who have believed, fear Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and believe in His Messengers and Allah Almighty will double your reward, will give you double the reward from His mercy and He will forgive you. And he will give you a light to walk in or to walk with. So you'll have light with you in the hereafter. Next after that is the recitation of the Holy Quran and pondering over the meaning of the Holy Quran and applying the ruling of the Holy Quran. Three different levels. All of them are important. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that this Holy Quran is a guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned and described the Holy Quran as guidance, as, as light and nur. We are talking about nur, not light, because light now has a specific definition. 
But again, nur is totally different from light, which is, can be understood as liya, for example. Nur is something that is specific. It does not it contain any harm whatsoever. So it's a pleasant light that is comforting and does not contain any harm. Light can be harmful, isn't it? Can contain heat or can damage and cut and so on when it is concentrated. So when you are talking about too much light, that could be dangerous, isn't it? So Allah Almighty does not describe that as light. It means ghiya. He describes that as light, which is the comforting and peaceful and merciful light, which is nur. So whenever we are mentioning it, you need to understand this. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to humanity, to mankind, that there came to you from your Lord guidance and light, mean nur, the Holy Quran, to benefit from. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is why he emphasized this concept. He says, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in it there is guidance and nur, light. So hold on to it. Never let it go. Means your most important reference in anything, first and foremost, is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is meant is, as we say, to understand and to ponder its meaning and apply it. And this way, it will guide you from darknesses into nur and light. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, this is a book that we reveal to you so that you will take people from the darknesses into nur, the light. With the permission of your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Part of the Holy Quran has a special light. So not all of the Holy Quran and giving light, they are not on the same levels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose whatever He wants from His creation and from His saying and attributes. The Quran is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Out of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen something specific. Among them, three stands out. The first one, Surah Al-Fatiha. The second one, the last ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah. For these two together, they were revealed in a specific situation with a specific procedure that was never used before by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, never used later. Only for these groups. The Messenger sallallahu was with Jibreel alayhi salam. When they heard a sound coming from above, Jibreel alayhi salam looked up and he said to the messenger sallallahu alayhi salam, a gate from paradise was opened today. It was never opened before. So even Jibreel alayhi salam is not knowing what is going to happen. Something is happening. It never happened before. Then an angel came from there. Jibreel alayhi salam said to the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, the angel that came down today never came down before. So he was sent specifically with something. When that angel came to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he greeted him and he said, I'm giving you a glad tiding of two lights from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surah Al-Fatiha and the last part of Surah Al-Baqarah. You'll never recite any part of it except you will get what is in it. You will get the reward in it or you will get the dua that is in it, the supplication in it. And the third one is linked to today, to Friday, which is Surah Al-Kahf. The Messenger وسلم, said the recitation of Surah Al-Kahf in Fridays will give you a light from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for the full week. Between the two Jumu'ah is light from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. What does light mean Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala means? means guidance and blessings and understanding, good and correct understanding from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you. That is in this world. In the hereafter, it will be an actual light for the person who recited it. After the Holy Quran, we can speak about this world. The ibadah, which is salah. The first part of the salah is wudu. Now the parts of wudu that you wash correctly, repeatedly, will be a light for you in the hereafter. The Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to us that the believers in the hereafter will be resurrected with radiant faces, shining faces. And their hands and feet are shining from the traces of wudu. 
the wudu that they used to do. So that is why in the other hadith, the Messenger of Allah said, if any one of you could extend that light, then do it. If you are able, when you are performing the wudu, to go further up in your uh, hands and in your feet, do that. He said, before your own, in the hereafter. The salah itself is light, described by the Messenger of Allah as nur. The Messenger of Allah says, the salah is nur. It is a nur for the person in this world and in the hereafter. It will be accompanying his word and uh, work and deed also to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Messenger of Allah said about the salah, anyone who observes the salah, it will be for him a light and a proof and protection from hellfire in the hereafter. So he started with what? With nur, light. It will be a light for him and a guidance or proof and a protection uh, from hellfire in the year uh, after. Now, the, uh, out of the salah, there are some salah that are important, more important than the others. The two most important salah are Fajr and Isha, when we are talking about light. The two salah that will give you most light in the hereafter. In fact, it will give you the perfect light, complete light in the hereafter. Observing these salah, but there is a condition. These two salah are Fajr and Isha. The condition is that they must be prayed in the masjid. If it is not in the masjid, you will not get that specific reward. The Messenger Muhammad وسلم, said, give a glad tiding to those who walk to the masjid in the darkness of complete and perfect light in the hereafter. So going early in the morning before sun, uh, sunrise and going after sunset to the masjid, the two salah, the Messenger وسلم, said that, that the reward for that will be complete and perfect light in the hereafter, complete and perfect nur. But that is only if you are walking to the masjid. Going to the, so that is why it is recommended, even if you miss the first jama'ah in the masjid, for these two salah, go to the masjid and pray it in the masjid. Also. So inshallah, if you had an excuse for being late, whatever that might be, inshallah, it will be included also with this great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next after that is dua, making dua. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us light in the hereafter and to complement it for you and complete it for you and perfect it for you. That was part of the dua of the Messenger of Allah When he used to start the night prayer, the Messenger of Allah used to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah Almighty is the nur and light of the, this world and the hereafter. He says, Allahumma lakal hamd, anta nur samawati wal ard. And furthermore, it was part of the dua of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, whenever he will leave home to the masjid. A dua about nur, about light. Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you light in your body, your limbs, in your surrounding, and in your heart and actions and dealing. All of it, complete. It's only about nur. So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, used to say when he goes, Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make for me in my heart nur. And in my eyes, nur. And in my hearing, nur. And from my right side, nur. And from my left side, nur. And from above me, nur. And from below me, nur. And from in front of me, nur. And from behind me, nur. And increase for me my nur. Double it. That is the dua whenever you are leaving home to the masjid. Many times we are missing it. But you need to remember this, because of that, inshallah, Allah Almighty in the hereafter will give you the, uh, that one. Also repentance, the sincere repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, it was also part of the dua, by the way, of Abdullah bin Mas'ud He used to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and among it, he will pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him nur in the hereafter. <coughs> tawbah, making tawbah and sincere repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran that will give the believers their nur and their light for them and it will not be stripped away from them. It will not be stripped away from them. It will be in front of them and from their rights as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran. Uh, the final point, or two points rather, the first one is generally, any good deeds, any good action, 
any kindness that you observe and you do to others, this will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it will help inshallah to lighten for you uh, and give you light uh, in the grave and in the resurrection and on a sirat. One beautiful hadith from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the rewards from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for these good deeds where the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about places or palaces in paradise that are crystal clear, can be seen from inside and from outside. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Allah Almighty prepared it for people who will give food, share food with others, and those who are gentle in speech, and those who continue the fasting all the time, continue the fasting. And for those who pray at night when people are sleeping. In one narration, and those who spread salam, greetings of peace. So the people ask the Messenger Wasallam, who can do all of that? You need to do it continuously. It will be a lifestyle, not only once. So they say, who can do that? The Messenger Wasallam said, my nation can. My followers can do that. Inshallah. Subhanallah. Inshallah, yes. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, anyone who feed himself, means from halal, feed himself and feed his family, he has shared food with people. Right. Although it's your obligation, but Allah might reward you for it. And the other, and anyone who gives salam to anybody whom he knows or whom he does not know, he is being gentle in speech. He has spread the greeting of peace. And anyone who fasts the month of Ramadan, then fast three days every month, it will be as if he has fasted all his life. All the time. So he'll be among the people who fasted continuously. And anyone who prays the Isha in the masjid with the Imam in Jama'ah, it will be as if he has spent the night in prayer. So he will get the reward. It's an easy thing to do. But Allah Almighty will multiply it, and this way, inshallah, we may Allah Almighty make us all among them. Amen. The final point, and the most surprising of all, revolves around love. Loving good things and loving others for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Loving the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Loving the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves is something that is greatly rewarded by Allah Almighty. <coughs> One beautiful hadith from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and very surprising hadith explains about pillars of light prepared for people. People who love each other for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. They are not prophets, not messengers, not martyrs. They did not do much. However, they sincerely love one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For them, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, they will be pillars of light. Even the prophets and the martyrs wishing for these pillars of light. It will be for whom? The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allah Almighty says, for those who love one another for my glory, the glory of Allah for my majesty only. Nothing. So they visit each other, they reach out, they call each other, not because the other person is my friend, my colleague. He knows me, I know him, he is my neighbor, he is my... No, simply because he is a person that I believe is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is why I love him, that is the only thing. Nothing else. So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned this, which is a great thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among them, inshaAllah. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een.